what did I just find? Greetings, salutations, <sighs> and all good things in between. You scared the crap out of me. Who are you? I am you from the future. I come to give you a glimpse of what's to come. What do you mean? Well, you just stumbled upon AI, and you seem to be doing some fun things with it, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm here to tell you about a time in the far distant future where AI and humans not only work together, we also play together. Sit back, relax, and allow me to weave a tale for you. Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. Happy holidays, everyone. Matt here. Welcome to the Friday Before Christmas live stream where I'm gonna do something completely different. Still got some app sheet stuff in here, but what do I plan on doing? Well, recently I've discovered OpenAI and I was having a discussion with a buddy of mine and he said, wouldn't it be interesting if you could play a role-playing game like D&D with the AI. Yeah, you're right. That would be amazing. So I put together a thing that allows that sort of thing to happen. And we're going to do it here. If you look in the description for this, there's a link to the public version of the app. This is the public side. It's only available during the actual live stream. But over there, you can go and you'll find the ability to create turn suggestions. This is the ability for you to suggest during such and such an encounter, I'd like to see somebody do this, or I would. I wonder what they would do if, yeah, oh, a giant dragon comes in through the whatever. There you go. Any ideas that you have, you can go through. You can look through the various scenes that are involved for the story that I'm going to run through. You can look at all the encounters and for the encounter, you can make suggestions for turns that you'd like to see during that encounter. Again, that's a link down in the description, only visible during the, uh, the live stream. I'll probably come up with some way for you to see all of this after the fact. But that's all of the ones and twos of what, we've, what I've got going on here. Let me show you what I've been working on. Okay, so back over here. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Hey, thank you for the ugly Christmas sweater. I appreciate that. Confirm for me that the live stream is working. YouTube is showing some issues on my side. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I'm pretty curious to... Uh, so far, it's been working out pretty well um <laughs> kinda all my tests have been pretty good so we'll, we'll see if this uh see if this works hopefully it does all right so yep it's working cool awesome thanks my it's just the uh the playback on my end is not working but uh all of the all of the um stream health stuff looks like it's working okay so i will abandon that side of stuff and we will go over here so what have i created so if you go to this app if you go to the link down in the description it's a locked down version of this and should you find anything that you probably shouldn't be playing with please don't play with it <laughs> Uh, I literally spun out that free version, the, the public version that allows people to interact with it while I'm interacting with, if, with it over here in like 10 minutes before the live stream, before I went live. That's why I was a couple minutes late because uh, I was rounding off a few little things. So there might still be some things that are left over, but all right, let me walk you through what I've got here. So if you're unfamiliar with role-playing games, right, the idea is... Um, traditionally, right? It's a group of friends. We all get together uh, and we sit around and we role play. We all basically co-create co a story that we're all telling together. There's usually one person that's called the dungeon master or the game master. 
this is the person that's actually the person that's like telling the story. They're the, if you were to think about it like a Greek, um, like a, a Greek play, they usually have the, the narrator, right? The, the game master is the narrator. So in this instance, I'm the game master. I'm the narrator of everything that's going on. And then you'd have all your other friends, you know, around the table, and each one of them plays an individual character for the group. One person's a fighter, one person's a rogue, one person's a wizard, whatever. So, and then you just go around and you take turns. The game master sets the scene. You guys find yourself inside a dark dungeon and there's a clamoring in the distance. What do you do? And then you go through one at a time and each person says what they're doing. And then there's combat and the set and whatever. All right. So I'm not going to go into all of the combat and the like a roll of the dice and all that. Mm, maybe later. <laughs> Maybe later, but for this one, basically what I've got going on here is this is a storytelling thing. And I've set the stage where I have the overall, like the premise of the story. I have the characters that are involved. I've got the various scenes that I've got that I want to run through. And inside each scene, they have a either one or two encounters that I want to run through. And it's inside the encounters that's where all of the turn suggestions that you guys can submit. So if you go to, say, the uh, zombie horde scene, right? And you scroll down. So there's a little summary at the beginning. Um, and then you've got this spot right here. So you've got the ability to go in here and you can add your suggestion for what you would like to see. So I give you a little prompt of what's the beginning of the scene and then you can come in here and be like a dragon falls out of the sky and then when we're doing this encounter i'll pick these from the things that y'all suggest and we'll run through them if there's nothing there i'll come up with my own i'm pretty quick i'm pretty quick at this i've been running games like this for a long time not like this but i've been running games for a while um, and if you would like to see, you know, it falls out of the sky and lands on the dwarf, you know, you know, what I mean? all right, then you can come down here and uh, I've given you the ability to like, I want to specifically pick this for this one character. So when this one character's turn comes up on this specific encounter, your suggestion will be there available for me to see. And then I can pick the thing and we'll see what it does. <laughs> this should be fun, right? Okay, so that's that. Um, let me go back in here. This, uh, so there's still, there's probably going to be a little wonkiness involved with this app. Uh, it is still very much in a prototype stage. I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do with this at the end. I'm sure some other people would probably like to play with this put it out there at some point we'll see but there's still some little things that i need to do and so like if i here we go we'll just dive into like the <laughs> i didn't plan on breaking out the editor here but okay but like i noticed that um inside here for the encounter uh the ai generated summary is already showing but that shouldn't be showing shouldn't even shouldn't even be generated yet to be honest um hmm interesting i'm gonna hide those because it's giving away all the good stuff <laughs> all right that's a little tweakage there okay so let's go through and talk about what is the general story that I'm going to run through here. So I had my buddy that I was talking to that we played role-playing games all the time. He's the one that came up with his name. His, his name is Josh. Thanks to Josh for the story. Um, so the, uh, the, the name of the game, the name of the story is the ancient tome of Fallon Carr. And the premise hidden deep, let me zoom in here for you. Hidden deep within the Grey Mountains lies the ancient ruins of Falonkar's fortress. Falonkar was once a powerful wizard who used his magic to bring about a calamity that almost destroyed the lands of Iska. 
You and your friends have discovered that the tome containing the spell, Falansar you Falancar, Sar, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll probably vacillate. Used in his attempt to destroy Iska, uh, is hidden somewhere in the ruins. There has also been a rumor that a lich named Rossinok the White is searching for the tome, and he may have claimed the ancient fortress as his own. You must recover the Tome of Falansar and destroy it before Rossinok has uh, can use the magic it contains. Dum dum dum. Oh yeah, and so this uh, not only does this thing generate like responses and then like summaries of what's going on, uh, it also generates images based on all the inputs and prompts that are put into it. So this is the cover photo that it came up with. And uh, if you look, I tried to show the prompts that were used to show most of these images. So like this thing right here, that's what I fed to the image generation API. And that image that you see is the thing that was produced by all of this. Fun stuff. <laughs> Fun stuff. Really all I'm doing here is like, I'm learning how to use the API and we're like ins and outs and what can, what can we do with it? You know what I mean? What kind of fun can we have? Okay. So let's begin, shall we? So the first scene is undead camping. If I give you the description, a campsite with five small canvas tents surrounds a campfire. The campsite is located near a clearing in a heavy, heavily forested area surrounding the entrance to a mountain pass. It is night. Our heroes of the story. Let's go through them one at a time. We have Garn Stonespike. Garn Stonespike is a 62-year-old male dwarf cleric. He has dark red hair, lo a long red beard that's plated, and blue eyes. He wears a suit of full plate mail and an open-faced helmet. He has a large round shield with an anvil emblazoned on it in his right hand and a spiked mace in his left hand. And this is the image that it generated for that. How fun is that? It's pretty cool, huh? We have Lucia Frost is a 20-year-old female human rogue with short black hair, hazel eyes, and a long, jagged scar on her left cheek. She wears gray clothes with a set of black leather armor. She has a small steel buckler on her left arm and a serrated curved dagger in her right. We have Senite Silence. It is an 18-year-old male tiefling warlock who has brick red skin, two black ram horns coming from his forehead, long black hair pulled into a ponytail between his horns, and solid bright red eyes with no pupils. He has a large black tattoo uh, of an arcane symbol covering the left side of his face. He wears dark red and gray adventuring clothes and a black hooded cloak. In his right hand, he's holding a black bone dagger. Tanera Venethia, my friend loves these weird names. <laughs> Tanera is a 92 year old female elf wizard, pale silver skin. She has long black hair and large bright blue eyes. She's wearing blue, light blue robes trimmed in gold. She wears a golden circlet on her head. An old well used spell book is underneath her left arm and she's holding a glowing metal wand in her right hand. And the last of them, Varus Valar. Valor, probably Valor. Varus Valor, I bet you is how he wants it said. Is a 24-year-old male half-elf half -elf fighter. He has light blonde hair and a scalp lock, golden eyes, and a short beard. He's wearing a scarred and dented breastplate, dark clothes, and a green cloak. He's holding two fantasy-style short swords. These are our heroes, the intrepid members of our adventuring party, and they shall go forth and defeat this lich. Let's begin. <laughs> so, the first encounter is the zombie horde. The setup here we have is 
Oh, he didn't provide any, uh, like, hmm. He didn't set the scene very well. I just kind of copied these over. I might have set the scene a little more. Lucia's keen hearing picks up the sound of heavy footfalls coming from the darkness beyond the fire. She stands, drawing her dagger, as six rotting zombies stumble out of the darkness and into the firelight. Roll initiative <laughs> that's what you say at that point all right if you are, as i'm going through this and uh i'm i'm constantly making updates to this app if you go to the uh the link down in the description please make uh, people who are in the chat let me know if that works so you can do it you should be able to make entities and you should be able to do turn suggestions um you just have to keep updating your app in order to kind of see the, the updates that I'm doing. You should be able to follow along. Let's see how this goes. All right. The first turn belongs to Varus Valor. I'm going to keep saying it that way. So we're at this zombie horde. It's turn number one. I see nobody has made any suggestions. And if I go and I look at who this is, so Varus, Varus is a half-elf male fighter. All right. So now what I've got to do is I need to give a prompt to the system that's basically what do you see at the beginning of your turn. So I have the encounter starter there to kind of remind me about what's going on. So they're camping out inside the forest. There's a zon and then Lucia's keen hearing picks up the sound of heavy footfalls coming from the darkness beyond the fire. She stands, drawing her dagger as six rotten zombies stumble out of the darkness and into the firelight. You stand and ready yourself for the battle as a zombie rushes towards you, snapping at your face with its teeth and now we wait and see what this thing comes up with doesn't take too long there's a whole bunch of stuff happening right here what's really going on is it's generating a response it's making an image it's generating a summary and another image so the response i got back was as the zombie rushes towards me, I quickly step back and raise my short swords ready to strike. Trying to keep my breath steady in the face of the undeath monstrosity, I shout, We'll make mincemeat out of you, beast! Then I thrust forward with both swords, aiming to hit the zombie's shoulder and take it down. That was an AI. That was an AI. It's playing D&D playing a role-playing game <laughs> okay next we have lucia ah the person who heard them all in the beginning okay lucia is the rogue of the group so i'm gonna give her what we call advantage in the role-playing games she was up and ready to go ready for the battle uh you uh, let's see. Hmm. Having heard the zombies before they appeared, you have advantage. I'm just going to straight up leave it like that and see what this thing does. Yeah, this should be interesting. Yeah. The link works, but I'm not finding the prop. All right, Gen Dragon. So... Uh, if I, hold on, I will go and open the game, the link myself, so we can see what it looks like. While we're waiting for this thing to mm, chew on this, usually these things don't take this long. The, the, this initial prompt is usually pretty quick. Something got stuck. That'd be my luck. Like I'd get one thing to work. And then nothing. Um, all right. So if you go to right, you're on the, the on. So this is the, the 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 app as it exists when you go to the link. If you go to Undead Camping, you go to the encounter. 
and you go right here should be this suggest prompts for turns here if you click the add button you should see the name of the encounter up here at the very top then you can come up with whatever you would like to see here Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Gen Dragon, you are suggesting player act, not player actions, but uh, things that the 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 game master would say at the beginning of a player's turn. That's what we're doing. We're really like prompting the player, as in like, all right, Gen, it's your turn. The zombie you were attacking is trying to snap your face. What do you do? You know, something like that. Um, that's the idea. Yep. And if you want to specifically select for, I want to suggest this for a specific person, you can just click on them. And then I've given you the description of who that is. So like, this is the wizard and then this is the cleric. And so you have the ability to kind of look in here and see who's, who's what sort of, what sort of, um, class are they? But that's how you make the suggestions can't wait to see what you guys come up with okay looks like this thing didn't uh didn't work yeah this one okay now there is a um there is a uh a content filter that we might be fighting up against i've been i've been like mm, leery with certain things with like zombie and undead and snapping at your face you know what i mean like these pretty strong label strong words like that it's like well nah, maybe we shouldn't do that maybe it's gonna kick this out and not like it um all right so if i try and let's see what the responses look like <laughs> this is a technical this is a technical youtube channel right so we might as well dig into the why isn't it working while we're doing it okay it did give a uh it did give a response. Okay. Who is John? <laughs> John. Okay. All right. Let's see. Maybe I just need to refresh the page. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So then let's do a dive into the data source. And let's go look at the turn and let's see did the turn produce a result nope sure didn't yeah so this one didn't didn't kick off okay let's delete this record and try again shall we all right i'll go back to the encounter refresh the app Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I see your suggestions. All right. Yeah. These are some good ones. Okay. Are there any images being generated for these? This should be. I'm wondering if that spinoff I did isn't doing it very, very fast. Let's see if I can't get this to work again. I'm going to take somebody's suggestion of Lucia jumps into a tree to get a better look from above. Let's see what they do with that. Hmm. If we come back here, we can watch what happens. So there's the record, and we should see uh, something drop into here. There it is. Yay. Yay, still working. I take a quick glance. I take a quick glance from up the tree, scanning the area below. I slip my hand behind my back and feel the reassuring grip of my serrated dagger. I take in as many details as I can, the shape of the terrain, the positioning of the enemy and their relative strengths, any potential safe havens. I'm trying to formulate a plan. When I hear Varus call from call up from me, can you see anything, Lass? Any viable route to attack? I call down my observations, calculating each of our best strategies. I'm ready to jump into the fray whenever they are. Until then, I stay put amongst the leaves, gathering information and keeping an eye out. For surprises. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Okay. <laughs> what do we got for Garn? Garn here. Alright. A zombie is trying to break Garn's holy symbol. Alright. So I'm going to tweak this a little bit. 
one of the zombies stumbles towards you grabbing at your holy symbol it appears it's trying to break your holy symbol oh this should be good oh all right anybody that that plays role-playing games you know hmm this cleric's gonna be like turn undead or something and destroy this undead thing that's holding his holy symbol all right enraged i let out a bellow and swing my mace in an arc towards the zombie in the name of our gods i cry out my voice reverberating among the ruins with a powerful swing i release the mace in a crushing blow to its skull all right sparks of bright light arc around the monster and it stumbles backwards groaning and hissing aloud i take care to I take care to keep my shield between me and the other zombies, glancing around to make sure the others are still in the fight. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, now we're on to Senite. Senite is the warlock of the bunch. Okay, so we have how many of these zombies six okay so we've got like a couple over there and a couple over there um a trio of zombies have stayed together in a group and are shambling towards you mm. all right mr warlock what you got see what the AI warlock has to say shall we <laughs> legit I know right this is kind of fun isn't it all right what did it say Oop, wrong screen there is a moment of stillness stillness as I assess the advancing zombies my breath quickens and my free hand tightens on the hilt of my blade taking a step forward i raise my voice and call out we need to separate them Varus. take the one on the left lucia you take the one in the middle garn the one on the right tenera be ready to focus fire on whichever one of us is in the most dangerous now wow this is crazy as i say the final word i sprint forward aiming my short sword at the zombie on the right the crimson eyes of the creature widen in surprise before I slam my weapon into its skull and it crumples to the earth. I guess it took care of that one. <laughs> wow. All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. That was pretty good. All right, Tanera. So this is the, the wizard of the group. All right, so... Uh, I'm curious, like, I don't want to prompt anything. I just kind of want to see what's going to happen, you know? <laughs> like, where do they take this story? You know what I mean? Like, what are they going to do? Um, how can I word this so that it's like, I, I'm not leading. Okay. Tanera, let's say your teammates are making short work of the zombies, but... But Garn has suffered a bite from one of them. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Let's see what the wizard does there. Garn's the cleric. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Small little book. Awesome. I turn to the others, my face set with determination. Guard needs help quickly, I say urgently. Let's move him out of harm's way. I leave my spell book on the ground. What? And take Garn's over arm over my shoulder, helping him move to a more secure spot. Bro, you're a wizard. What are you doing? 
Hold on, Garn, I say, trying to keep my voice steady. We'll get you out of here and find someone who can help you. With a few grunts and heaves of exertion, I manage to help him to a nearby boulder where others can gather around and protect him from further harm. I open my spell book, quickly flipping through its pages to find a spell that might help us. Taking a deep breath, I prepare the spell and move my wand in the precise motions needed to cast it, hoping that my friends can fend off any remaining zombies. A bright light bursts from my wand, blinding our en enemies and allowing us a chance to escape unharmed. unharmed. With Garn safe, I am finally able to take a deep breath and let my shoulders relax. Alright, I, I guess we ran away from the zombies. Okay. Who's next turn? Vars? The fighter. All right. Uh, you take up the rear as your team moves off into the forest for a for safety, right? The zombies on your heels. The remaining, let's say, two zombies on your heels. Add some details in there. Give it a little more specifics, shall we? All right. This is the fighter. I'd like to see the fighter wade through these guys and like, lay waste. With a battle cry, I turn and face the two zombies, lifting my swords in challenge. I feel the rage coursing through my veins as I prepare to fight, my swords ready, poised to strike. I can sense the thrill of the fight ahead. I am eager to face it head on. Come at me! I yell, eyes never leaving the two looming zombies in front of me. Alright. Go fighter. Go fighter. Though, let's see. The wizard and the wizard is tending to the cleric, and the fighter face the zombies. Seems everything is in hand, but you have something. Special. <laughs> well, let's throw a curveball. Yeah, let's throw a curveball on this. What do you do if I say you've got something special that you could do? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Came back. I ready my dagger, feeling the weight of its blade in my hands. With a swift motion, I draw a deep breath and launch myself forward, my body a blur of motion and speed. I slash my dagger deep into the nearest zombie, my training allowing me to navigate beneath its clumsy, clumsy swings with ease. I swiftly shift my weight and go in for another lunge, this time connecting with the second zombie and sending its foul body collapsing to the ground. With a deep exhale, I turn from my handiwork and look at the others. Let's get out of here before any more of these things show up, I say, the urgency clear in my voice. Encounter over. Nice. Yeah. When the last zombie falls, Garn sets out about using his healing magics to close the bite wounds the zombie is left. <laughs> Senite, being unwounded, sets about severing the hand of one of the zombie corpses. He says that it's for his studies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> what? Okay. You see what I mean? Like, yo, what just happened there? Okay. You got to keep in mind the all this thing is is a large language model text completion engine. Okay. <laughs> this is crazy. When you start thinking about what's happening here, okay, like I'm, I'll, I'll show you. This is the prompt that I fed these things during that encounter. So this is the last prompt for the last turn in the uh, in that encounter. 
Okay, so you can see, let me kind of get it to where you can see it. So you can see here, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm actually feeding to this more than like just what's going on. So like it starts with, imagine that you are a creative writer of fantasy fiction and you are playing a role playing game such as Dungeons and Dragons with a group of friends. Your responses must be in the first person perspective in present tense within the bounds of your character's class and race and in your character's voice. And then I begin some markdown stuff because this thing understands markdown. Aha, <laughs> so you can like stress this as this is header number one, summary of the story. And then we've got bullet points. And then I've got a sub table here with all the characters and like descriptions of what they look like, what they are, what they have, what they're holding. I tell the character, your character is this. And then I've got, here's a summary of the current story so far. So like, here's the encounter. And then I feed it a summary. Like I have an AI that's tasked with creating a summary of what happened during each of the turns. And that's what this is. So turn number one, the summary came out to be, Varus Valor steps back and readies his short swords as a zombie rushes towards him. He boldly yells, we'll make mince meat out of you beast before thrusting forward with both of his swords aiming to take the zombie down. That was written by an AI. The AI not only came up with the, that first response, and then afterwards I said, cool, now summarize what happened on this turn. And it came up with these things. And I'm using those, feeding it back to the system all over again, feeding it every turn that happens, and that's how it's able to keep a context of what's going on. Kind of go back here, so you can see I have like turn number one, two, three, and I put all of it. And then I have some rules for responding. Like, you must respond in the first... Hmm, I need, to change, I need to update that. You must respond in the first person in the present tense and from the perspective of your character. You must describe your actions, you, the actions your character takes with literary details. Every action your character takes must include dialogue, progress the story, and be within the bounds of what your character can do according to their class and race. You are allowed to have your character speak with other characters present in the encounter to coordinate future actions, to gain advantage in the encounter, to obtain information, and to joke around or make the encounter dialogue more entertaining. Remember, your responses must remain in the first person present tense and in the voice of your character. Remember that your character equals Lucia Frost, blah, 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 with the whole description there. It's your turn and you see the following. The wizard is tending to the cleric, and the fighter stands in the face of the zombies. It seems everything is at hand, but you have something special. What do you do? All of that is what I fed to this system in order for it to understand, hey, you're playing, I need you to respond like a player that's playing a D&D &D game and in the first person and like all that stuff. That's what I had to do in order to get that to work and to come up with a system that would allow me to kind of feed it this history about well, what's going on so far. Like, what's this? What's the history of the game? Because it needs to know what's happened so far. Right. What fun, man. All right. Let's dive back in and go to the next scene, shall we? So this scene is complete the camping with the undead. And uh, I don't have an and I don't have a uh, ending for that one. Skip it. Move on. If we go to the game, we can go to the next scene, which is, can does this work? Yes, there it is. Need a helping hand. They got to add helping inside there. The first encounter. So if we go and we set the scene for what is this scene? The, uh, the ruins of an ancient stone fortress with only two featureless towers left standing. The, fe the fortress is located on a large outcrop of stone high in the mountains. It's noon. That's the scene. The encounter. Entrance, entrance exam. The featureless stone of the tower stands before you, seemingly impenetrable. You know that a powerful ancient wizard originally built this fortress, but it is now inhabited by a powerful lich. You see no way to enter the tower, but it must have something to do with the undead. Hmm. 
First turn is Sinite Silence. So, hmm, this should be interesting to see what they, uh, to see what they come up with for like a, how can we get into the castle, right? You see no obvious ways to enter the castle. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Let's see what the, uh, so this is the warlock. Let's see what the warlock comes up with, shall we? Hmm. We go here. Yep. There we go. Just making sure it's still working. I'm just waiting for this thing to die. <laughs> I assess my current situation, narrowing my bright red eyes at the looming castle before me. I am Senite Silence, a tiefling warlock, and this is clearly a formidable challenge in front of me. As I ponder my options, I feel a stirring in my veins, a tingling sensation that tells me something dark awaits me within the castle. Taking a moment to survey the land, I notice an old and crumbling wall several meters away. I sense this could be a weak point to my advantage. Turning to my fellow adventurers, I confidently declare, Follow me and we shall line the walls with this castle. What? Our route is the one that you can see, and I'm sure that the devious cunning of yours truly will find us a way in. Okay. So he's an arrogant tiefling, I see. My friends exchange glances of excitement and apprehension. Ooh, see, like we're dropping out of tents now. Hmm. Uh, they know of my reputation as a daring risk taker. Without further hesitation, I make my way towards the nearest wall, occasionally looking back to lead the group. As I near the wall, I survey it carefully and spot what looks like a small crevice at the base of the wall. Possibly an entry point. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Real heavy on the literary style here. I point out the crevice to the group and we'll all move close and we all move closer. Knowing that this is our best bet for entering the castle, I take out my bone dagger, ready it to pry open the crevice. <laughs> Pressing my dagger against the crack in the wall, I push forward with all of my strength, levering the dagger firmly against the crack, and slowly but surely, it begins to open. After a few moments, I am able to squeeze through and find myself in a large chamber inside the castle. With a relieved smile and a victorious feeling, I step aside and motion for my friends to follow. After you, I say, waving my hand grandly. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite one. Oh, man. <laughs> that tickles me. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about y'all. That tickles me. I want to see what the image that this thing generated for this. Uh, what did you come up with? Mm. So, like, you see no obvious ways into the castle. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. All right. Kind of seems an obvious way into the castle right there in front of you, right? <laughs> Fail. All right. And then this is the other one. Like, bro, what is this? Like, yo. Okay. If you look at the prompts that I'm giving this thing for the images, like, yo, how's it coming up with this? Like, ending turn turning prompt. Generate an image showing the actions of a fantasy role-playing game character turn as described, as descriptive, as described. Good Lord. In a mixed media with oil painting elements. Game, blah, blah, blah. Scene, blah, 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 blah. Senite, blah, 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 blah. Like, yo, I'm describing the character, the scene. Like, the tower stands before me, you seemingly in unpenetrable. Like, nothing, nothing about this tiefling or nothing. No characters. I mean, I, you know, all right. Castle and stuff. But, like, man, these images are really, really off. Oh, well. Let's move on. So now they're inside. Um, everyone enters through the, what did he call it? Crevice, crack, the hole. <laughs> Sinite made in the, in the wall and you all find yourself inside a featureless corridor. The only light is that from, is that from outside 
peppering through the crack. Mm. So this is this this these words are what's used to generate the cover photo. So if you can get so if you can get nice descriptive inside there, you know, my hope is that that would pick up and you know show a corridor with like a hole in the wall with some light coming out and some adventurers inside it. You know, that's kind of what I'm hoping it's going to generate. I draw both my swords and search for hidden enemies. My gaze flickers around the corridor, scanning for any indication of a hidden threat. My face is stern and focused as I take a few steps into the dark expanse. Be on your guard, I call out to the rest of the party. Anything could be lurking in the darkness. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, we got a suggestion for Lucia Frost. Lucia, you see a faint apparition hover near the ceiling. Its shape resembles a large book. Oh, 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 you know what I didn't do is I didn't put like credit. I didn't like make a way for you guys to say who submitted the thing. Mm, I've been nice to know. I eye the apparition wearily, my eyebrows knitted in confusion. I take a cautious, cautious step back, keeping my dagger cocked in my right hand. What is this? I ask, my voice just above a whisper. I glance around the room, making sure the others are still ready to act if needed, before turning back to the apparition. Peering around it, I try to gauge its movements and mannerism to determine any hostile intent. Hmm... I'm thinking, I'm thinking the words apparition, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like this faint apparition, I'm betting that that is informing, cause you got to think about like wor primary word associations, you know, like what's the strongest association that you could have if you read a bunch of novels and a bunch of fantasy stuff and like, you know what I mean? If you just had all of this knowledge in your head, you're a real big fantasy nerd. Faint apparition, you'd probably think ghost. And so that's probably where this thing is going in its mind when it's thinking about stuff like that. Things to keep in mind when you're when you're coming up with your little posts, when you're coming up with your your uh, suggestions. Yeah. All right. All right. So this so the rogue is looking around, seeing what's going on. Mm, all right. The wizard. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, there's a suggestion for the wizard too. Okay. All right. All right. You sense an increasingly strong draft seeping through the walls and swirling in the room. Don't want to add anything else. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Should we put anything else into that? Nah. Let's see where it goes from here. Mmm. What have we here? A ghost entering? Is it a white? I stand still and allow the breeze to cool my pace, pale silver skin. All right. Assessing the situation with my keen elven senses. I carefully examine the walls and ceiling, searching for where the draft may be coming from. After a few minutes of observation, I spot a crack in the corner of, in the corner of floor near where the wall meets the ceiling. Okay. Leaning in, I take notice of how abnormally cold the air is that is pouring out from the crevice. Interesting. I murmur as I lower my spellbook and wand, as I finally realize this is no ordinary breeze. Mm. Mm. Interesting. All right. I'm just going to keep taking your suggestions. Yeah, man. So Garn Stone Spike. This is the cleric. You feel an invisible weight bearing down on your neck and back. And a fog trying to cloud your mind. <laughs> a little bit. And a little bit. This is fun. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm having fun. This is pretty cool. I let out a gruff bellow, shaking my head from side to side as I fight against the fog, hefting my large round shield in my right hand, preparing to bring it down and protect my companions from whatever lies ahead. Bring it down on your head? What are you doing? I prepare to address this unknown force, feeling my voice echoing and reverberating through the narrow corridor. Show yourself, coward! What manner of dark magic is this? I boom. <laughs> All right. 
I love it. This is fun. Sunite. Okay. So, the warlock, right? The rogue. Uh, okay, the wizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear it before you see it. A ghostly apple. A ghostly warrior. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to some. We'll get to some meat and potatoes here. Warrior bursts through the floor right where the wizard is examining it. Examining it. I bet you I could like leave all of these typos in here and like this language model when it's ingesting what's going on would probably like fix it. Oh, you spelled that word wrong. We'll fix it for you. <laughs> it probably would. It's a language model. It's the weird, that's the thing you gotta remember. This is just nothing but a language model. Come on, come on, there you go. My heart lurches as a ghastly figure bursts through the floor tiles. Instinctively, instinctively, I draw my dome dagger, my eyes full of determination. Tanera! I shout over my shoulder, pushing her out of harm's way. I twist my body to the side and raise the dagger, prepared to take on the ghostly warrior. Stay behind me, I call out as I face the warrior. I let out a battle cry, interesting, ready to face the ghostly foe head on. Varus, the warrior, the wizard stumbles back and Senite stands before the ghost. You can tell this is an ancient warrior by the armor and weapons it's carrying. Hundreds, if not thousands of years old. Mm. 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 See what, see what the fighter has to make of that, shall we? Should be fun. If we, oh, yep, there it goes. Like I was just gonna go back and check we still working? We still working? We're still good. Still good. Eventually, we will, eventually we'll probably run out of space. There's only so much room you can send to the API. I grip my swords tightly, pull, my pulse pounding in my ears. My eyes dart around the room, looking for any sign of danger. Nothing out of the ordinary seems to present itself. I take a few steps towards the ghost and address it with an air of authority. What business do you have here, trespasser? Speak now and be frank or I shall have no choice but defend my companions. Interesting choice. Chooses to talk to the ghost. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna take this one. You notice something not, not quite right out of the corner of your eye. It bends, it blends with the surrounding stone, but you realize there is a pressure plate in the center of the room. It's probably a trap. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. Fun stuff. Oh, I like it. <laughs> like, okay, so these guys are over here dealing with a ghost. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a trap. The rogue, as would happen, the rogue's like, yeah, whatever. You deal with the ghost. They look trap. I take a few steps back and raise my left hand, halting the party's progress. Wait, I say, my voice echoing off the walls. I take a few more steps into the room and slowly and slowly away from the others, my eyes tracing the ground with caution. This room has a trap laid within it. I continue through the room, edging closer to the pressure plate until I'm standing directly above it. I crouch down, strutting, studying the contraption for a moment before speaking again. It seems simple enough, I say, glancing back at the group. I can disarm it if you'd like. I can see, yeah, yeah, so you know what I mean? Like, all right. Like, oh, wait, echoing off the halls, blah, blah, blah. This room has a, you know, it's kind of like, oh, hearting my party's progress. Mm, it doesn't quite fit in very well, you know? Sometimes 
Now, that's probably, you know, dealing with the ghost and then we're doing something else. But like now this is kind of like it would lead them to think, oh, well, they're just coming into a room or something. Interesting prompts. Interest, interesting. <clears throat> the wizard. Um, the ghost stands tall and speaks in a ghostly voice just above a whisper. You have, you are the ones trespassing. This is my master's castle. Leave, or I shall make you. <laughs> no exclamation point. We'll leave it like, eh, just, just go away. Oh, I'm going to make you go away. <laughs> see, what they, see what that does, eh? How does the wizard respond? I stand firmly, my, held wa my wand held firmly in my right hand, and fix the ghost with a steady gaze. No. I say, my voice calm and authoritative. We seek knowledge, not trouble. Will you answer our questions? I hope my tone indicates that I'm willing to bargain if I must. Oh, these people are like legit going to engage in conversation with this thing. Oh, man. That's dope. Uh, nah. Uh, okay, so this is the, the cleric. So the cleric's going to be like, yeah, no, this is an undead thing. This has got to go. <laughs> Even though the ghostly figure seems cordial, is that how you spell it? Enough, you are not comfortable with the undead abomination. <laughs> and it needs to be freed from its what, what, we, what word am I looking for here needs to be freed from its uh, bondage I can't I can't think of the word yeah all right so now I'm gonna push the cleric in a certain direction instead of like waiting to see what they do I'm gonna push them Let's see if they go with it. I brandish my mason shield ready for action. Release yourself from this unholy captivity, I shout, bellowing with authority. Don't none of us have time for this lifeless being's nonsense. My comrades give me an approving nod, ready to assist me in whatever may come. All right. Yeah, buddy. Uh, you agree. <laughs> And the undead has no place here. Let's just see. Let's just keep pushing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't talk. Don't talk. Eternal torment. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you, Gen Dragon. That's a good word. Yes. Or captivity, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, because they're held there and cursed or something. I take a step forward and draw my bone dagger. In a loud, resolute voice, I declare, These abominations have no place here. These? Isn't there only one? We must cleanse them from this place. Taking a deep breath, I focus my arcane energy so I may bring an even greater power to bear. My eyes burning red with preparation, I call upon the forces of the nether and set forth a hellfire blast of magical energy toward the unholy denizens of the shadows. Uh, not quite, mate. There's only one there. There's not quite one. Uh, with a flash of power, Sinight blasts the ghost. And it disappears. Oh, I'm going to play some DM tricks on you now. Oh, you hit it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned ethereal. Yeah, you can't see it. It's still there. It's it's going to come stand like right next to somebody and then get them. 
Oh, some DM tricks. Let's see what they do. Like, hmm, hey, we defeated it. Yay, moving on. No. Come on. Come on. I raise my swords and cautiously look around. Even with Senite's spell, I am not convinced that this place is safe yet. <laughs> I look to Lucia, and we exchange a nod of understanding before I sheathe my swords and turn to guard into Nera. We should keep going. There's no telling what else could be lurking in this place. I motion for them to come forward, and we continue on our journey. Alright. Okay. You know what? I'll, uh, I'll take, I'll, I'll take, I'll take my cue from these guys. Sure. Moving on. There was something else planned to happen, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's as it goes. All right. This is, this is a really interesting cover photo. Like, all right. Almost like the word soccer in here somewhere. Interesting. Uh, there's, there's some wild things this thing comes up with, man. You know what I mean? All right. So let's go to, that is the first. Oh yeah, and look, uh, I kind of like blended these two scenes together. Oh well. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. We can move this to the end. Uh, let's just move on. All right, if we go back here. We go to the stairway to heaven or hell. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. Turn this one as the ongoing one. Go to the encounter. Yes. So if we set the scene for this. Uh, so evidently they've gone to the top of the tower now a room at the top floor of the tower in front of a large door Really need to kind of fill these in a little bit more uh, The door is inscribed with infernal glyphs. The door is the only thing in the room A door on the top floor of the tower In front of a large iron door A room what? A room on the top floor of the tower in front of a large door. I'm really lost at what he's trying to say here, but all right. <laughs> Anybody make sense out of that? I don't know. Start for the encounter. So, okay, they're at the top of the tower now. And uh, there's a door in the middle of this room by itself. As Tanera approaches the door... The air before her shimmers, and a ghostly form coalesces in front of her. Sounds familiar. The ghost looks like a gnome, but some of its features would be better suited to a devil. Before anyone can act, it speaks in a dry husk of a voice. What are you doing in my fortress? Get it now before I'm forced to kill you. Though the words are a threat, the apparition seems somehow sad. All right. Oh, 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 nope, 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 nope. Let's try it again. So now we're at the top of this thing with... Oh, that's really cool. Like a door up there or something. Let's see what this person says. So, um... The room is enti entirely devoid of features except for the door in the middle of the room and the gnome ghost go let's see because i because i am feeding it the summary of that last encounter where they're like nah man let's just destroy this thing and move on hmm, see what that i stand ready and keep my gaze steady watching the gnome ghost i draw my swords holding one in each hand my mind races but my body remains poised i call out both boldly what do you want with us ghost i kind of just told you it wants you to go away bro lucia so this is the rogue of the group. The no. The fighter seems ready. But the gnome ghost seems uh, unperturbed by the... Threat of the party. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
okay, sure, whatever. We'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. I want to see what they do with this door. This door in the middle of the room by itself. I take a deep breath, stealing my courage and focus, and frown at the ghost with determination. I give the ghost a warning. We know you're a wraith, and we're not afraid. We just want a peaceful solution here. Wow, these people like to talk. I raise my dagger high in the air and take a step forward, my eyes never leaving, leaving the wraiths. I didn't say it was a wraith, mate. My gaze carries a heavy threat, and I say, we can resolve this without any bloodshed, but if you insist on staying or attacking us, you'll regret it, says the rogue, with a dagger approaching a ghost. Okay. All right. In that, in that moment, all right, I'm going to be a DM here. Like, okay. The ghost moves in a blur. Speeding forward and moving through Lucia. Who falls to the ground. Oh, we're going to mess it up now. Falls to the ground, pale and unmoving. What do you do now, Mr. Cleric? The gnome ghost moves off to the side and stands unthreateningly. I spell that right? Wow, I did, yeah. Right? All right. So this thing, this person went and attacked this ghost, and the ghost is like, nope. Now it's over here, not doing anything. What do you do? My blood boils and I grip, and my grip tightens on my mace and shield. I can feel the heat radiating from me. I take one step forward and send a booming voice echoing through the room. Show yourself, spirit. Bro, it's right there. Do not take, do, do not think to trifle, trifle with us, else you taste the same fate as the wraith that was slain by my sword. But don't you have a mace? Hmm. All right. My eyes dart around the room for any hint of movement. With my free hand, I, I ready a prayer to be invoked should I need the aid of my lord. Yeah, this one really kind of lost track of what's going on here. You know what I mean? Really kind of, uh, we're losing we're losing track of the story here. Let's look in. Let's just sidebar, sidebar. Let's dig into the, uh, what's the, um, po what's the prompt that I'm giving it? How much of this is it getting? Right? Okay. So, yep, yep, yep. So, unfortunately, the AI summary isn't working. So, that sucks. But it's at least getting all of the details of the turn. All right, all right. It might be because it doesn't have the story so far stuff. That sucks. I wonder what's happening there. Anyways, moving back on. Let's see. Uh, Sinite Silence. The gnome seems to only attack those who threaten it. And the door is really piquing your interest. Go to the door, bro. Go look at the door. The gnome will leave you alone. Go to the door. Go over there and see what it does. I want to know what it does. What's the door do? We shall see. I step forward, carefully shifting my weight. Uh, with shifting the weight of my shield and bone dagger so I can keep it between me and the gnome. I fix it with a hard stare, partly to intimidate it, partly to keep it from attacking me. You there, can you tell me what lies beyond this door? I ask, making sure to keep my tone firm, yet somewhat friendly. All right, it's now the wizard. Oh, somebody suggested something. Oh, yeah. You see the glyphs. See. Okay. All right, all right, all right, yeah. You see a set of glyphs seem to float away from the surface of the, of the door towards each of you. Yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Sweet. <laughs> All right. What do you do now? What do you do next? I hold my wand before me and focus my gaze on the glyphs. I cast a spell of detect magic, detection magic, interesting, and identify the nature of the glyphs and their purpose, if any. I assess the situation. I can feel my years of experience guiding my judgment. I intone, what dark magics hide here? Has this room been sealed for a reason? We should tread lightly and remain vigilant. With a wave of my wand, I gesture for the others to keep a safe distance as we wait for an answer. All right. The gnome speaks again. Leave. Or suffer the fate of your friend. Yeah, you know, like nobody's helping Lucia. Like, just lying dead, like lifeless on the ground. Uh, maybe if I remind them, the gnome nods its head towards Lucia, lying seemingly dead on the ground. Kind of weaving here. Kind of weaving. Let's see what this thing does. Yeah. My fury rising with me, within me, I can feel the rage as I look upon my fallen friend. You will pay for this, I shout as I lunge forward with my swords drawn. I can feel the adrenaline coursing through my veins and I am ready to fight to the death to avenge Lucia. I can only hope that I'll be able to get her out of here alive. Says the fighter attacking the ghost. Okay. Oh, it's Lucia's turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Now we're going to have a lot of... Now we can have some real fun now. All right. So. Ha. What can we do with Lucia? I, I want to throw a curveball. I want to do something like, oh, you find yourself standing, you know, in a dark room. I will. Let, let's just see what happens. All right. Um, suddenly... You are surrounded by darkness and completely by yourself. Uh, the sounds of your movements seem to, seem to echo around you, but you can't make out any features or anything around you. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Like their mind has been taken over or something. <laughs> Being a rogue and trained to handle situations even when I can't see them, I feel around with my left hand and draw my dagger with my right. Gripping my dagger firmly, I slowly step forward, straining my eyes to see any shadows or outlines. I take a slow and deliberate I take slow and deliberate steps so as to not trip or reveal my presence to anyone. Just as I take my fourth step, I hear a scratching sound coming from my right and come to a halt. I pause and take a deep breath before I call out, Who's there? Alright. We'll come back to you. <laughs> Garn's turn. All right. So Garn, the cleric. The fight fighter. Maybe if I, I'm going to stop referring to them in that, in that I'll be, I'll call him his name. Varus charged the gnome who simply stood there and allowed the fighter to lose his balance during his swing and moved through him. Varus is now lying on the floor 
lifeless like Lucia. The gnome moves off to the side and returns to his unthreatening pose, stance, pose. Yes. All right, cleric, your fighter and your rogue have just been who knows what, who knows what's happened to them. This, what are you gonna do? I bellow at the gnome in Dwarven. Stop your nonsense. You have proven your strength. Now put down your arms and let us discuss further. There'll be no need to put anybody or anything else in harm's way. Staring straight at the gnome, my shield raised, my mace cocked, I spoke in a low and threatening tone. All right. I glanced to my side where I could see my allies lying motionless on the ground and added, you take one more step forward and I swear to every dwarf in my bloodline, I will end you. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man, turn undead. You're the, you're the, you're the cleric, bro. Turn undead. It's a ghost. Uh, let's see. So, what did I have this guy do last time? All right, the gnome seems uh, the door is piquing your interest. So I step forward, carefully shifting my weight from the stone dagger. Blah 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 blah. You there? Can you tell me what lies beyond this door? So he's trying to get interest. The gnome, the gnome, ignored your question and only seems to respond to anyone that threat threatens it. The wiz, the wizard, seems oddly distracted by the door. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the wizard's like, hey man, I see a whole bunch of glyphs coming off of this door. What's going on? Even though it didn't do anything with that. I just thought about that. Didn't do anything with it. I narrow my red eyes and step forward. The gnomes... Silence stirring a hint of annoyance in me. I hold my dagger in front of me, and my voice is tainted with shadow and power as I speak. You don't have to answer our questions, but do not test me. Now, what do you know of these ruins? The gnome takes a step back, and I can see his apprehension rising. You will, you will tell us what you know about this place, and you will do it now, I demand. My voice laced with power of my demonic pact. Okay, I'll say you're casting some kind of spell there. the glyphs from the door as uh, prote protection wards you know you have the ability to redirect those using your arcane power Recognizing the glyphs emanating, emanating towards your friends from the door as protection wards, you know you have the ability to redirect those using your arcane powers. Push. Push. <laughs> Push. Where do, where do you go with that? What do you do? I step forward and focus my attention on the glyphs. My free hand whips downwards and I quickly cast a counter spell against the wards. With a gentle whisper, I can feel the magic disperse back to nothingness. And the glyphs, the glyphs now inert and powerless. Let's proceed, my friends, I say, turning to face them with a glint of excitement in my eye. But stay alert. It's only just begun. What about the gnome? Well, all right. Verse Valor. So, this guy is also down on the ground in some kind of coma or whatever. Do I have... Oh, but I can't copy it. Ah, uh, that sucks. All right. Uh, you know what I can do? I can come back here and find... Right there. 
Moochie. Suddenly, you're surrounded by darkness and completely by yourself. The sounds of movement seem to echo around you, but you can't make out any features or anything around you. Same prompt, different person. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. See what this does. So the first one was a rogue, and it's like, oh, I walk really quietly and softly so that I don't, you know, disturb anything. See what happens. This one's taking a minute. Yeah, come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. No, no, you don't want to, you don't want to do, you don't want to do it? You don't want to go? Did you go? Nope, didn't go. Didn't go. Okay, let's try this again. One more time. Get back to where we were. Okay. Varus's turn. Do that. See if we'll get it to work this time. It didn't look like we were approaching. Yeah, no, we're not approaching a limit here. This thing is steady staying around 800, less than 1,000. It's really amazing. As I stand here in the in this darkness, I draw my swords, making sure the blades are free and ready should something decide to attack me. I look around and begin to take inventory of my situation. What is this place? I call out, my own voice reverberating off unseen walls. I listen intently, curious as to what could be out there. I ready myself for whatever may come. All right, fair enough. Maybe if I described a little more what was going on there. Lucia Frost, yeah. All right, so you're in the darkness. You've been looking around at what's going on, trying to explore. Um, you walk for what seems like hours with nothing the entire time. Darkness surrounds you and so Slowly, you begin to feel a darkness invading your mind. I'm going to copy that because <laughs> I'm going to use that for the other guy too. The exact same prompt. It's really curious to see what they come up with the different ones, you know what I mean? Because it's like, well, you're this character and you're this character. I draw my dagger, feeling the, resolve, feeling the resolve to take care of whatever is lurking in the darkness. I step forward, leading my group cautiously. Be on your guard, I whisper, my voice barely louder than a whisper. Maybe I should have reminded that they were in this darkness by themselves. Hmm. My free hand is up and ready, my senses responding to any clues in the darkness. I scan around, my eyes subtly adjusting to the gloom, searching for anything that could be a sign of danger. If there's something out there, I murmurs, my voice quiet but confident, it won't be able to hide from us. All right. I'm waiting for like one of these people to be like, oh, I try and, you know, do something in my head or something. See what they do. Uh, okay. All right. You hear loud incantations reverberate all around. Yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, we'll one up this. Uh, Tanera opens the door in the middle of, of the room, and you all hear, and you hear loud incantations reverberate all around the room. The gnome disappears oh that's two ghosts that are now floating around inside this castle that you haven't dealt with yet Ooh, what you gonna do open the door let's go in the door go 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 my grip tightens on my steel shield and mace as i feel the reverberations through the walls i look to my companions nodding briefly as a sign of solidarity and call out to tenera do you need any aid my lady I fear dark magic may be at work here. I remain braced and ready to act, vigilant, vigilantly watching the door she opened. All right. Senite. 
Oh, somebody, somebody has a suggestion. You see the doorknob morph into a key ring inscribed with some stuff. <laughs> the no-coder. <laughs> That's funny. Nice. <laughs> That's, that's funny. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Curveball. Let's see what that does. <laughs> this, is some, this is some weird stuff. Interesting. Seeing where it goes. My curiosity piqued by the transformation of the knob, I take a, two, I take a few steps towards it and peer at the keyring. The dark metal on the ring and the intricate carving in the name of Ta'am, the no-coder, is impressive. I touch it hesitantly. What? Thinking it could be a trap, but I feel nothing. Oh, uh, you took it away from me. Ah, oh, I was going to make that a trap. <laughs> I look to my companions, making eye contact with each of them to see if one of them has a suggestion as to what to do with the key ring. Shall we take this key ring and use it to open whatever, whatever is this to um is guarding? <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> That's funny. You, uh... As soon as the door opens, you hear the loud incantations echoing through the room. You notice the key ring transform, but you but your attention is grabbed by the Seen in front of you. Oh, I'll just leave it to you. What do you see in the room? Oh, this is what does the AI come up with? Oh man, have at it, Haas. What do you come up with? Continue the story. <laughs> As a wizard, I immediately focus my attention on the caster in the corner. Huh? My long black hair flows behind me as I stride forward, wand ready and circlet shining. I reach out with my free hand, pointing a finger at the caster and declare with a booming voice, Your magics will not take hold in this place. With a wave of my wand, a wave of magical energy washes over the caster, dispelling their magical enchantments. Now is the time to act. I look, to my, I look at my allies, a half-elf, a human, a dwarf, and a tiefling, and say, Now let us press our advantage. With that, I channel my magical energy and direct an arcane blast at the caster. Bro, you already did something. What are you doing? Doing a little too much here. You're doing too much. Slow down. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. All right. I'm going to end this because, yo, you just went into this last room. It's going to move on. You just went to this last room, and this last room has... A lich inside it and so we go to this last scene here oh yeah make this one the ongoing one go to the next encounter oh final death that's interesting now see that's more like what I'm trying to get it to generate ah, that's, look, that's looking pretty good all right, so the scene is the Lich, Rossinok, stands at the altar with his hands raised, reciting the words of the spell that will destroy everything that you care of. He ignores your entrance, but the four hellish death knights, standing in the center of the cavern amidst the maelstrom of energies, turn their glowing red eyes, their red glowing eyes, towards you, raising their flaming greatswords in advance to your position. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So, oh, Tanera. Ah, oh, this, this just works out really well for the last thing that they just did. You, your wave of arcane energy washes over the lich, countering its spell with a 
blinding flash that sends it stumbling back. Words. Fucking spell. Um, the four death knights are approaching, but your burly teammates seem up to the challenge. I don't want her to, you know, go after that. Go after this lich. Do that. Do that. Do that. Keep going after this lich. Take it down! <laughs> the suspense is real. Dum, dum, dum. I power up my metal wand. It's glowing tip now radiating a blinding light. As I feel its energy course through me, I cast a wave of arcane energy at the list, hoping to counter its spell. You already did. And ward off any further attacks. With a flash of light, the spell is countered, and the lich stumbles back. You're like summarizing what I just said. Turning to my comrades, I raise my wand high and call out, We can take them! Stand firm! With the Death Knights fast approaching, I ready myself to fight. Alright, whatever. Sure. Senite silence. Ooh, yeah. Um, you feel a strange pull towards the Death Knights. Not a bad thing, but something familiar. Like, no, 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 I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him, actually. You feel a strange pull towards the Death Knights. Not a bad thing, but something familiar. Something like you normally feel towards your infernal patron. Perhaps there's some connection. Oh. I want to see if this thing will like take over one of these dead night death knights. I'll let it do it. <laughs> Have at it, Hoss. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. What we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I frown, my eyes studying the death knights as I think. I cannot sense the same presence from them that I sense from my patron. So that is out of the question. Hmm, a few typos. Interesting. I gave a glance. I give a glance to my allies and take a step closer considering our options. I sense something from the Death Knights, I begin cautiously. Something familiar, though not from any source I can recognize. We should be careful. I grip my dagger in my hand and keep it close at hand as I step closer. The Death Knights close to your group and engage with their flaming swords. Their black armor reflects the light in strange ways. Just leave that open and see what they do. Ooh. It's thinking, it's thinking. They should have known better than to challenge a party of adventurers, I say, raising my shield, my mace at the ready. With my free hand, I reach for my holy symbol around my neck. Oh, it's about time. I call upon the power of my gods, and a shimmering light flies from my hand, washing over my allies and me, strengthening us, strengthening us for the upcoming fight. We have the strength of the gods on our side, I shout. The Death Knights step forward, swords drawn and crackling with energy. I look to my allies, and then with a roar, I charge forward. I lower my shield and lunge for the closest knight, smashing him with my mace. The knight staggers backward, surprised at the sudden attack. I bring my shield up to protect myself from his counterattack, and I finish him off with a powerful swing of my mace, sending him flying back. For honor and valor, I cry, turning to see the rest of my companions in battle. They may count on me to protect them. <laughs> it's an interesting tag at the end. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Garn. Uh, 
pieces of the destroyed death knight clatter to the do the ground around you and you engage in battle with two towering death knights and their flaming swords what you have complete I probably don't even need to add this like you got complete confidence in yourself like these characters seem pretty confident in themselves to begin with <laughs> you know what I mean like they're like ah they're pretty uh guffaw-ish I don't know what the word is for that but you know what I mean like mm -hmm. they're ready for these challenges I raise my swords and yell out an oath of vengeance as I sprint towards the Death Knights, determined to end this fight quickly. I rely on my master swordsmanship to guide my strikes, hoping to vanquish my foes with deadly efficiency. As I get closer, I swing one sword down at the knight in front of me, and with the other sword, I aim to block any gleaming strikes from their weapons. With my free hand... Your free hand? What? You have three hands? You have three arms? My free hand, I reach... For my belt and grasp a vial of magic potion, just in case I need, just in case I find myself in dire straits. All right. Oop, wrong button. It's Lucia's turn. Uh, conveniently, if I can't spell, a death knight stands between you and... Varus. Is that how you spell it? I can't remember. U.S. Varus. The only one remaining. Sure. Dude smashed one. I'll say another one's off doing something else. Got killed. And this one's doing whatever. Oh. Magnets. Let's see what they do with this one. The rogue has advantage. Raising my dagger in front of me, keeping my shield close. What? I got a buckler, yeah. My eyes narrow as the imposing death knight emerges from the shadows. You won't be taking us with you, I say coldly. I focus my attention on my alleys. Varus, back up. We'll take him on together. Turning my attention back to the death knight, I prepare to unleash a flurry of attacks. Unlike my allies, I have the advantage of my rogue skills, allowing me to vanish into the shadows and then reappear right next to any opponent. Huh? <laughs> I have the element of surprise, and I intend to use it. Uh, excuse me. And I intend to use it. Garn, cast a defensive spell, I shout as I enter the fray. Then I launch my attack swiftly and silently. My dagger is a blur as I stab and slash, aiming to catch the death knight off guard and hoping to gain the upper hand. What do you do, my friend? You slash this thing to bits. You do. Lucia. Lucia's flurry of... 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 Uh, slashes. Of blows. Blows. Sends the final death knight. Falling to the ground. The lich... Let's out a horrid cry and brandishes a large metal staff. A bright crackling lightning bolt issues forth and strikes Sinite square yeah square in the chest sending him flying 30 feet back take on the lich dum 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 i need some like i need some better music <laughs> i need some like you know <laughs> I shout out a warning. My staff, what? Held out defensively in front of me. I channel arcane energy 
infusing my staff with lightning as a bright shield erupts around me. I direct my focus on the lich, hoping to direct him from uh, distract him from my allies, allies and give them time to act. Foosh! <laughs> a fireball comes flying from my staff, hurtling towards the lich with a hot trail of smoke and ash in its wake. I silently pray to the gods that this will turn the tide. Dun dun dun! With a brilliant flash of heat, a giant fireball erupts around the lich, setting some of its undead flesh aflame. Ooh. It staggers backwards and you spot oh wait hold up oh, all right all right, all right. So, so this is the guy that just got hit by a lightning bolt you rise from the ground your clothes still smoking from the lightning yeah <laughs> from the lightning i can spell And you can feel, didn't ask how big the room is, and I said cast fireball, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, you rise from the ground, your clothes are still smoking from the lightning, and you feel oddly energi energized from the energy from the bolt. Ooh. Lightning. I just cannot spell lightning. <laughs> Crackles between your fingers. And you seem to be able to control it. Oh, I just gave you lightning. I just gave you a lightning power. What are you going to do? Just gave you a lightning power. Like, ooh, something weird happened. The lightning bolt, you were able to absorb it. Now you can, like, use it. What are you going to do? Mm. I I smile grimly as the lich falls back, engulfed in a, in a inferno. Shouldn't that be an inferno? Mm. Quickly scanning the battlefield, I prepare myself for what is to come. Grasping my black bone dagger in my right hand, I raise my left hand to the sky and begin gathering crackling energy from the nearby swirl of electricity. All right. This is our chance. Now, I shout to the party. Let's not let it go to waste. Focusing on the lich, I focus my raw magical energy and unleash it in a powerful ball of lightning aimed directly at the enemy. If this strike doesn't finish it, I know that it will give our party the opportunity to strike from another angle with no surprise attacks. Dun, dun, dun. Garnstone spike. The lightning. The, uh, the light. Ning strikes the lich square in the chest and part of its body disintegrates. You see, who is this? Garn? Oh yeah. You see your chance. Now, the undead abomination is weakened. And you spot something hanging from its neck on a chain hint 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 anybody that knows anything about about a lich hmm hmm what is that the lich probably wouldn't be wearing it around his neck but you know try to try to wrap things up it's been almost 2 hours now as soon as the lightning strikes the lich, I rush forward, holding my shield up. I call out to my allies to press the attack and focus my attention on the undead creature. With a mighty war cry, I swing my mace, aiming to break off the chain that hangs around the creature's neck. I've seen such evils before, and if I can break the necklace, it may weaken the creature further. See? Yeah, it knows. It knows. It knows. Garn seems to have uh, keyed in on something and has removed 
the <laughs> yep got my lich phylactery and has removed the chain pendant from around the lich's neck the lich lets out a horrible cry and launches a magical attack at Garn. Just leave it. Just leave it. Yes. Lich is not happy about that. How dare you? Yes. What's next? I ready my swords, gritting my teeth as I observe the dangerous situation unfolding in front of me. I know that Garn needs help facing the Lich, and I'm determined to do all that I can. Garn, let me help you, I shout. I unsheathe my swords and stride forward, hoping to get close enough to the Lich and help fend off the magical assault. My eyes are focused, searching for any weakness in the Lich's defenses. As I get closer, I call out to Garn. I call out again, Garn, what should I do? You spot your advantage as Varus moves in close to the Lich. The Lich seems really distracted right now. We just leave it like that. The Lich is really distracted right now. And Varus is right here giving you advantage. What are you going to do? Go get your sneak attack, right? Without hesitation, I draw my curved blade from my belt, holding it firmly in my right hand. I take a deep breath, trying to focus my thoughts and steady my hand. With a quick flick of my wrist, I unleash a curved arc of energy from my blade that streaks towards the Lich, says the, the rogue. I utter a small chant as the arc of energy slams into the Lich, hoping my spell will, will distract him long enough for Varus to press his attack. Interesting choice for the rogue to make. Um, though, uh, let's see. So Lucia has cast a magical rope spell and it's entangling the lich causing a distraction that's granting Varus an ad uh, advantage let's see what this does this is the wizard all right so the rogue's doing some magical stuff what are you gonna do wizard let's Let's see, let's see some magical awesomeness. I take advantage of the distraction and unleash a powerful spell on the Lich. Focusing my energy and focusing my wand towards the Lich, I cast a powerful lightning bolt spell, which arcs across the room and wraps around the Lich like a metal cage. Ah, I then move behind my companions, taking cover in their shadows, ready to, ready to protect them if something goes wrong. Ooh, yeah. The Lich lets out a long, high-pitched cry as the lightning, lightning cage traps it. Uh, on the floor, a few feet away, you spot the charm, the pendant, that was hanging around the lich's neck. Mm. A lightning bolt cage. Well, that's fun. I like that. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Never seen lightning bolt do that. I take a step forward, my eyes never leaving the pendant on the ground. I can feel the energy radiating from it, and I can see why the Lich was so determined to keep it. With a few words of power, I form a shield of mag magic energy around the pendant to protect it and prevent anyone else from taking it. 
I glance around at the group, and the light in my eyes dimming a bit. I think we should get out of here before the Lich escapes, I suggest wearily. We should take our prize and go. Yes, you should. The tome which the Lich, Lich was trying to steal at the when you steal when you bought burst into the room is now floating not now it was floating is floating above the altar a slight blue light emanates from around the book We'll just leave it like that. Yep. All right. You guys are here for this book. Go get the book. Yeah. Go get the book. As the lich attempts to snatch the tome, I rush forward. What? Poise, shield poised and interpose myself between the lich and the tome. Back. This object is not yours to have. I shout. My voice booming. The tome continues to levitate above the altar, and I can feel my holy symbol vibrate in my hand. I can sense the presence of a powerful magic around me. I look to my allies and say, Quick, we need to get this tome to safety before the Lich regains its strength. It's in a... Maybe I need to remind it that, yep. The Lich snarls and curses you all from inside the yeah like if i need to remind it what's going on lightning cage snarls the lich snarls and curses you all from inside the lightning cage but seems stuck for now this is the fighter i'll just leave that for the fighter as it is see what the fighter does with this so far like this is like this is like working little tweaks here and there make this like even a little smoother as i look around i'm not sure how to proceed i turn to my companions hoping for someone with a plan well we need to get out of here i say my voice low and gravelly echoing off the electrified cage i take a few steps back my eyes shifting between lucia garnsonite and tania tanera any thoughts on how we can get out of this mess huh all right so I didn't know what to do. All right. Um, you, you're sure that there's magical traps keeping the tome over the altar, but perhaps there's physical ones as well. The Lich has gone silent inside the lightning cage and just stares at you, watching your every movement. All right, Rogue. Go do some Rogue stuff. Yeah. Go do some Rogue stuff, Mr. Rogue. I regard the Lich coolly and speak up. So, it seems you have a tome locked up with quite the array of protection. Will you free it for us, or are we going to have to work a bit harder to get it? Hmm, interesting. I keep my left hand near my buckler, ready to react to any sudden changes, as I await for a response. Alright. Lucia is trying to get information out of the lich which just stands there silently staring at the tome come on people get the book wizard ah you know what i should have included i should have put something in this prompt about like Tomes, got magical energy floating. Like, I should have put that in there. I stand still. 
I stand still and stay silent, thinking of ways to gain the Lich's attention. Huh? I meet Lucia. I My eyes meet Lucia's and I give her an almost imperceptible nod. I raise my wand in front of me and po point towards the Lich, focusing my arcane energies into it. Then I call out to the creature in a loud yet surprisingly gentle elvish accent. Your lordship, will... Will you not share your knowledge with us? We have come a long way and seek to gain your wisdom. We respect the power that you wield and come here in peace. Not. I pause and take a step closer, holding my wand at the ready. I can sense the power emanating from the creature, and I know that it would not be wise to under underestimate its strength. Your lordship, please share your knowledge, and perhaps we can help each other. What? What? This is like taking a way side turn over here. Like what happened? You're gonna talk, you're gonna work with this lich? Um. <laughs> Not sure what the wizard is up to. You approach the tome and scan for any traps. Trying to find a way to free it. You're confident there's nothing here. Despite the fact that it's floating and glowing <laughs> with power. Yeah, let's see what they do with that. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. I know, I have pacifist PCs. I know, what is this? What's going on here? I reach out slowly with my free hand, extending my fingers slowly towards the tome. I whisper a prayer to my patron, hoping I can draw on their strength to aid me. I focus on keeping my breath steady and steady myself should anything go awry. As I take the final few steps, my outstretched hand nearly touches the tome and the air around me crackles and hums. Okay. Uh, noticing the spell that's about to blast Senite, you know you have the exact counter spell at hand. But simultaneously, the Lich breaks free. If I can type. Lich breaks free from the lightning cage. Oh, yeah. And raises its staff. Just raises its staff. Make a choice. Oh, present the system with two options now and see what they do. Mm. Yes. It's even more interesting to think that this is a language model making these decisions. I raise up my shield and call out, Varus, Lucia, blind that beast while I cast the spell. I focus my will and my prayers, feeling the power of my deity pouring through me as I invoke a spell to hold a spell of holding to oppose the Lich's powerful magic. I look back to my companions, setting my features in determination and saying, do what you can while I finish this. Well spoken. Uh, you stand next to Garn as it counters whatever spell the lich was just trying as he counters you stand next to garn as he counters whatever spell the lich was just trying to cast which really frustrated it and it throws its staff to the ground <laughs> The lich is having a temper tantrum, like a child. No, no, not fair. <laughs> uh, 
I look down at the lich, grip on my sword, uh, my grip on my sword's tight. I feel a freezing chill come over me, and I can't help but shudder. The lich must be stopped. I can sense the ancient magic coming from it, the immense power it holds, and the danger it presents to us. I glance over at my comrades, my brow furrowing in determination as I raise my swords. Let's end this now, I say, my voice firm and loud. We can defeat it and then be rid of it for all eternity instead of running away scared. Tides have turned. Tides have turned. Uh, let's see. You stand next to Sinite as he's reaching to take the tome. And simultaneously work to uh, swiftly work your hands over the altar looking for any traps he may be inadvertently triggering. Because like this dude's just like, I'm just going to go take this book. It looks fine to me. It's like, yeah, mate, maybe not. Maybe you should ask the wizard. He's a warlock. All right, fair enough. He's a warlock. I reach out and gently place my hand on Sinite's arm, singling, signaling him to pause and not to touch the tome. <laughs> yeah. I carefully examine the various components of the altar to see if there are any hidden traps, quickly scouring the surface for any tripping indication, paying especial attention to the tome itself. I squint at it closely, looking for any indication of a trigger or telltale sign of danger, while subtly shifting my body closer to the altar, ready to dodge or jump away if needed. Mmm, it's getting good. Let's see. So, this person was trying to talk to the, the, the Lich. I stand still and stay silent, thinking of ways to gain the Lich's attention, blah blah blah. Your Lordship, blah blah blah. Your Lordship, please, whatever. Yeah, no, <laughs> Um, with a cry that shakes the very walls of the chamber, the Lich focuses its attention on you, and suddenly it's standing right next to you. Looming over you. And suddenly, in, in a blur, yeah, I'll provide a little more. It moves across the room and is now standing right next to you, looming over you. Like, this thing just went... Whoosh, and it's now right next to you. What are you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? I, I stand my ground and focus my gaze on the lich. The wand tightly gripped in my right hand. Keeping my voice even and calm, I address this creature. What is it that you want, creature? I ask it, keeping my wand outstretched and ready to lunge at any sudden movement it makes. Tanera is a pacifist. Wow. Just will not do anything. Um, you pause and wait for Lucia to look over the altar. When she gives you a nod of approval... She then gives you a nod of approval. Yeah, there we go. Then removes her hand from your arm and nods. It's okay to proceed. Here we go. Oh, man. Oh, what's really fun is you're going to be able to, like, read this story afterwards. It'd be really interesting. I have an AI that's building a story as it's going. It'd be interesting to see what that story turns out like. I take a step forward, my right hand gripping the hilt of my black bone dagger, ready to strike at the slightest hint of danger. 
The altar itself appears to have been made out of a strange metal, a black essence swirling around on its surface, and a circular symbol etched into its center. Details. I can feel the power coming off of it, and I look to my friends to see if they are sensing it as well. Let us proceed and see what awaits us at the altar, I call out, my voice strong and authoritative, despite my nerves. I take a step forward, my gaze constantly moving from side to side in anticipation of any threats that may come our way, and grab the tome, like, bro, get the tome. Oh, what was this guy doing? I raise up my shield, blah, 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 cast a spell, focus my will and my prayers, feeling the power of the deity pulling from it, and invoke a spell, hold, hold, a spell of holding to oppose the lich's powerful magic. All right. So he's like holding this lich. You struggle against... I cannot spell anymore. You struggle against the will of the lich, your spell of holding... Succeeding in holding it in its place. You must concentrate on your spell to maintain it. And the Lich is constantly opposing you. Like holding a wet noodle. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> like holding the wet noodle. I don't even know. What did you do now? A. Eh? I concentrate on maintaining the spell. My arms trembling as, as I strain against the lich's invisible grip. Though I'm feeling the strain, I don't waver. Never. Not once. Showing an ounce of weakness. I glance over the rest of the group, trusting them to have my back and call out to them. Everyone, now is the time to strike quickly and with precision. No mistakes now. <laughs> we need to take down this list before it manages to break my spell. <laughs> with Garn holding the lich firm, you see your opportunity. Go get it. Go get it. Take it down. Push, 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 push. It's like you gotta push these things a little more. Look, this thing would just go on forever. Which would be alright, I guess. Maybe it would just keep generating a story, but like, we gotta get somewhere. Now was our chance, I shout, my voice rising with confidence. I raise my swords, ready to strike. When I give the signal, get ready to release the lich so I can attack. Huh? I hope my companions understand my intent and are ready to act quickly. I take a few steps closer to the lich, every muscle in my body tense with tense as I prepare to move. When I see the slightest of nods from my companions, I launch forwards. I thrust out with both blades, aiming for the lich's head. I know this might not be enough, so I brace for a counterattack. Dang, it's trying to chop the lich's head off. Yo. In a swift, decisive motion, Varus decapitates the lich <laughs> decap ah, that's not in the it's not in there it decapitates huh there it is i just wasn't close enough to it in a swift motion varus decapitates the lich it the lich you see senite is uh hesitant in grabbing the tome which you're sure is safe to grab as far as the rogue is concerned it's safe to grab it again you probably want the wizard to look at this but okay <laughs> all right I carefully move around the lich's corpse in order to keep out of Sinite's way, my dagger in hand just in case. I draw close to the toe, my eyes flickering over it for any signs of danger. Sinite, I say softly, do you know what this book is? If it's any sort of danger, let's take it and get out of here. Mate, this is what you're here for. I think there's, yeah, I think there's something, some piece of critical information is, is, uh, 
not being passed along along here. All right. Lucia and Senite stand near the altar and Senite appears frozen. Hmm. Book out of the air. The book is glowing and floating. Lucia and Sinite stand near the altar, and Sinite appears to be grabbing the book out of the air. The book is glowing and floating, and obviously encased in magic. And it might not be a good idea for him to grab the book. Push. <laughs> Let's see if the wizard's like, yo, what are you doing? I need to look at that. Let me look at that first. I step forward and my wand aimed in the direction of Sinite and Lucha. Halt, I command. I suggest you both step away from that magical book. I glance towards Lucia. Do not let impatience get the best of you, young one. The consequences of tampering with these ancient magics can be dire. I cautiously, cautiously reach out with my wand and start to weave an incantation, prepared to counteract whatever magic is protecting the book. All right, that is spoken like a good wizard there. You pause at the words of the old elf wizard. But your training in the arcane magics have told you that it's safe to grab the book. Grab the book. Grab the book. Grab the book. <laughs> I cautiously reach out to grab the book with my left hand, keeping my bone dagger tight in my right. My eyes never stray from the old elf's face, alert for the slightest hint of deception. If you'll permit me, matron. What? Not quite. I say in an even and respectful voice. You, you survey the body of the lich, noticing it's, it doesn't have a single item on it. Hmm. That would be weird. Survey. Yeah, that would be weird. Like you look at this lich's body and there's nothing on this body not a thing tattered robes really really all right i stepped forward my shield held up defensively the others may have noticed but i had realized this creature wasn't of this world <laughs> okay it was something otherworldly i bring my mace up and let out a loud voice creature of the nether speak what are you doing here bro it's dead I intone, my voice reverberating through the walls of the chamber. My gaze is fierce and determined, one that's been honed over decades I've served as a cleric. I take a moment to study the face of the creature, trying to determine why it's here and what it's searching for. All right, we are losing the narrative here. So I think I'm going to like stop this at this point. Like we're on turn 28. Wow. Of, um, of all of this. That's a lot. So if we go back to this encounter and I say, yep, I'm going to complete this. The prepared text that my body, that my buddy already prepared was as the lich fall, the power of the spell dissipates, leaving the room in darkness and you're breathing the only sound. After a few moments, a white light forms in the distance where the energy from the spell just vanished, revealing the ancient tome lying closed on the floor. A little different from what we were, what we were doing, but Eh, not bad. We just complete this. We just run through them all. We go back up to the game. We complete the game. And we say, like, what's the ending? Having defeated the Lich and recovered the Tome, our heroes 
set forth back to the city to regale everyone of their heroic tale. <laughs> right? Whatever. This is that how you spell regale? How do you spell regale? Hmm. Heroes. And that is the story. Wow. Hey, man. That was, uh, that was pretty interesting, right? And like all throughout this entire time, this thing's been generating images of all of this stuff. And I bet like everybody, you've been able to like walk through these and see what they look like if it's generating them. Yeah, no. Okay, those are the ideas. Looks like the ideas ones weren't working. And it looks like some of the turn ones didn't work. Like, what is this? All right. That's something. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's something that it generated. That's kind of cool. But again, like, these should be like, like, what is this? Yo, it's like a Pokemon. But like, these images are supposed to be like, an oil dry or an oil painting of a turn of a player. Like what it, this is it really lost the mark on the, uh, on the images here. So like that, that's more along. I mean, that's at least kind of along the same vein. You know what I mean? Like this is like D and D miniatures or something going on here. Eh, you know, anyways, this is kind of fun. Any other, any other cool little things to look at? We go back to here. We go back to all of the encounters. What did it come up with for this one? Hmm. It's like a dark forest back here and like a cave entrance of some kind. And who knows what this is over here is some kind of billboard that these people can look at. And it looks like none of these images started to work. The ending ones work. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. This looks like a game. Look at that. Like, legit looks like a game. Ah. Uh, so, like, the word role-playing game is definitely, like, polluting part of what's going on here. Like, what is that? S strange, abstract things. Ooh, this is kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Now, that looks like a legit, you know, like, that's something you might be... Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. All right. So, like, some of these... Maybe. Most of them seem really kind of weird. Nah, it's dope. Okay, that's cool. All right, that's cool. That one worked. All right. Yeah. Lightning cage? Yeah, there you go. The lich in a lightning cage, right? All right. All right. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Whatever, man. A lot of fun stuff. Anyways, that's all I'm going to do for today. That's really all. I, you know, I just wanted to have a little fun with this little thing that I was doing. Um, thanks for participating. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for jumping in. All of your suggestions and everything that everybody's throwing out there. Do appreciate it. Uh, I hope everybody has a great holiday. Enjoy your Christmas. Stay warm. If you're here you know, we've, in the U.S., we've got this massive cold thing going on right now. Yeah, it's like negative five outside. It's crazy. Um, stay warm, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see y'all in the community. See you around, everybody. Let's see.